Right, good afternoon everyone. Uh, today's subject is nutrition. We're going to be looking at diet, what constitutes a healthy diet, what constitutes to some degree an unhealthy diet, and then how to maintain health in our patients and the people we come into contact with. Uh, so the subject is nutrition. And the first thing we're going to look at is the components of the diet. And there are seven essential food groups that are required in the diet. These are types of food which we must have in order to maintain health, and there are seven of them. These are called the seven components of the diet. The components of the diet. These are carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, water, and fiber. So these are the seven components of the diet. A healthy diet must contain some of each of these. If not, the diet will be deficient in some way and the individual will be malnourished. Now, not only do people need all of these components in the diet, they also need them in the correct proportions. And this gives us the idea of a balanced diet. A balanced diet is a diet in which there is a good balance of carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, water and fibre. So these components must be present in the right proportions. That gives us the idea of a balanced diet. But in addition to that, as well as being in the correct proportions, there must be enough of the seven components of the diet. There's no point having exactly the right proportions of carbohydrates, fats, so carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, water and fibre, if there's not enough of them. So there must be enough of them as well. And this gives us the idea of an adequate diet. So not only must the diet be balanced to maintain, maintain health, it should also be adequate. So an adequate, balanced diet is required for the maintenance of health. Now, what we're going to do now is go on and look at the seven food groups that comprise the diet in order, looking at where we get them from and why they're needed to maintain health. And the first food group we're going to look at are the carbohydrates. 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 Now the first thing to look at is where we get these from in the diet. Well, these are in sweet foods and starchy foods. So, for example, sugar. In fact, sugar is a type of carbohydrate. Jam, of course, contains carbohydrate sugars from fruits and from added sugar. And in fact, all sweet fruit, all sweet foods. Uh, well, the reason they're sweet is because they contain sugars, really. So it's sweet foods, carbohydrates. Other foods which contain carbohydrates are cereals, bread, rice, potatoes, fruit and vegetables. The cereals, bread and rice are the starch containing foods. So these contain largely sugars, And these contain uh, starch. Actually, we could add potatoes to that list. Potatoes are starch containing foods as well. Fruit contains some sugar and starch, and vegetables comprise, uh, are made up of uh, starchy carbohydrates as well. So these are the sort of things that contain carbohydrates in the diet in large amounts. Sugary things and starchy things, fruit and vegetables. Now the reason carbohydrates are so called is because they contain these three components, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Carbo, high and drate. Carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And it's, it's important to note that Carbohydrates are energy foods. 
They are energy foods. They are the principal source of energy in most diets. Now we'll see in a minute that we get energy from fat as well, but the principal energy source in the diet should be carbohydrate. <clears throat> in fact, it's now considered to be more healthy to have a greater proportion of your energy requirements coming from carbohydrates than from fats. So the principal energy source in the diet, carbohydrate. Energy giving foods. So sometimes if you've been doing a lot of exercise and you feel tired and you have a sweet drink or eat a biscuit or something, you can feel that you get a bit of energy back. That's because some sugar has gone back into your blood and that can then be used as energy. So let's now look at the types of carbohydrate. And the first type of carbohydrate we're going to look at are the starch, starch carbohydrates. So starch is a type of carbohydrate. Now, carbohydrates are made up of individual units, each of which contains carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And in the case of a starch, starch is a polysaccharide. That means it contains many of these units comprising a polymer, a long molecule. So starch is a polysaccharide, long chains of, in this case, glucose molecules. So each one of these would be a glucose molecule. And in starch, there is a long chain of these glucose molecules. Now, normally in the diet, we get starch from carbohydrates. But in addition to that, glycogen is sometimes referred to as animal starch. Glycogen is also a chain of single sugar units. And we store this in places like our liver and our muscles to give us energy during periods of fasting. So starch, a useful form of energy in the diet, in fact, the most important form of energy in the diet, a polysaccharide, long chains of simple glucose units. Cellulose is also a polysaccharide. And cellulose is where we get fibre from in the diet. Now, a few years ago, people didn't realise the importance of fibre in the diet. It's only in the past 15 to 20 years that people have realised the importance of fibre. If you look at old science fiction films, for example, people thought you could take a few pills containing all the essential nutrients and that would be fine, that would be all you needed. But we now know that fibre is absolutely vital in the diet. It's vital because it helps us to excrete waste fats from the uh, what well, 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 weighs fats from the gastrointestinal tract that we don't need. And, it, and it's also important because it gives bulk to the uh, material that's going through the gastrointestinal tract. So it provides bulk for the faeces, especially uh, as it goes through the colon. As material goes through the colon, it's pushed along by waves of peristaltic contraction in the walls of the colon. And if there's fibre in the diet, these peristaltic contractions have something to grip onto. So fibre in the diet maintains regular bowel function. It may also be involved in preventing some diseases such as uh, cancer of the large bowel and another disease of the large bowel called diverticulitis. And because it prevents uh, constipation, it also prevents straining on defecation as well and can prevent such things as um, hemorrhoids, which are varicose veins of the rectum. So fibre is very important in the diet. Now, the reason fibre is fibre is because it's indigestible. We cannot digest it. It goes out in much the same form it came in. It just provides bulk. We can't break it down. We can't get energy from it. It just goes through the gastrointestinal tract and adds bulk. So it's not a food stuff, it's just something that keeps us functioning normally.